and welcome to another midday recipe with me, Chef Day, at home, in my kitchen, and with you guys, with you guys. And so the reason why we're doing it on Facebook Live rather than a video is because we want to hear from you. So let me make sure that I have all of your questions up here. Um, so, you know, you guys can ask as many questions as you want. Um, that is the whole idea of these lives. So let me just make sure that I can see them. There we go. Okay, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, today is a really, really easy, simple recipe. We always ask you guys, what do you want recipes with? And so we had someone in the group who said that they had a spiralizer, but they have hardly used it. And that happens so often with kitchen gadgets is that we see these things and we think that it looks like a great idea, but we don't actually really use them. I mean, how many guys, how many of you guys have got like a bread machine or something like that in the back of your cupboard that you haven't really used? So let me just get the live up and I will make sure that, first of all, I'm the right way round because that always <laughs> helps. And then I'll be able to see your lovely names and you maybe waving hello at me. That is always, always nice. Um, there we go, we're, we're in the right way around today. That's a good start. So as ever, there is a rainbow to find, but I make it a little bit harder because I don't ask you where the rainbow is, I ask you what is at the end of my rainbow. So what is at the end of my rainbow today? Please, 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 please do tell me. So let me just see if I can see you guys on here today. There we go. Okay. Right. I think we're cooking on gas or we're not actually cooking on gas because this is a raw recipe. So <laughs> no gas whatsoever. There we go. Okay. So, um, Sarah, good morning, Colleen. Good morning too. Uh, Sarah said another little kitten. Yes, it is a little kitten at the end of our rainbow today. So yesterday, we had Kizzy, one of our cats, at the end of our room, and today we've got Gino, who is our other cat. Um, so he's only little, I mean he's two, so he's like literally just an adult, but he's pretty big. <laughs> but we still call him our little boy. Um, Sue, hi from Bingley, hello, Tor. Excellent, and another reason to get Spiralizer out. Yes, 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 let's get you using this. Um, Colleen said that she already spotted the kitty cat underneath the rainbow. Yes, it's a fairly easy one today, um, but you're always our quickest, quickest off the draw. Um, Paul, just about good afternoon, it's just gone 12 noon in the UK. Um, and hello from sunny Wales. I do hope it's lovely there. I do, I do really hope that it's sunny there. It's not too sunny here. I've got a bottle of Prosecco chilled, ready for when the sun comes out. It's not happening today, I'll have to wait. Um, Sue said, oh, glad to see you're on time, Paul. Glad you guys are chatting. Colleen says, 7 a.m. there, 7 a.m. And Cara, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so before I get started, I have an announcement to make. Because when I have these announcements to make, I want to make them at the end of the show, but then I inevitably forget because I get into the cooking and into the chatting and da 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 and before you know it, the show's over and I've forgotten to tell you what I was meant to be telling you. So, let's start off with that today. So tomorrow, we have a very, very, very special guest on the show. So, a lady called Danielle Mopertui, I practiced that so much before the show, Danielle Mopertui, because I'm English and I just butcher any other language. <laughs> I will freely, freely, freely admit that. So I practice that quite a lot. So Danielle is a patisserie chef. She's had many, many, many years of experience. She's now vegan. So all of her food is vegan and she cooks the most beautiful patisseries. So really, really works of art, absolute works of art. So she will be teaching you guys a recipe tomorrow, same time, midday, but from her home, she will be starting us off with something relatively easy. So, you know, patisserie is something that kind of scares you a bit because it looks so exact and perfect and, you know, that can be quite daunting, really. She's going to start us off with, you know, the training wheels on. So don't worry about that. Um, so yes, join us tomorrow for Danielle Mopertuis. 
I'm so like proud that I can say that now. <laughs> Join us tomorrow for Danielle's show. Okay, so oh, we've got Antoni in the house as well. So let's get started with this recipe. Um, I want to show this to you guys because as I said, I know that if you have a spiralizer at home, but you haven't really used it very much, this is a really, really, really simple sauce that you can make either to go with this or you can use cooked pasta or something like that. That's absolutely fine. And I'll show you like a few techniques um, as we go. So this is my spiralizer. I think it costs about 20 quid, 25 quid, something like that. Um, do have a look at reviews of the one that you plan to buy because, you know, it's plastic and there are some that are made that are just, you know, not really fit for purpose and they're going to break after a few goes, especially when we're talking about using tough things like butternut squash on it, it might struggle a bit if it's not, you know, a bit more hard wearing basically. And you guys might have seen in Katie's recipe on, was it Wednesday? Yes, Wednesday. This week she was using spiralizer, but it was a different type of spiralizer. So it's type of spiralizer is, is kind of like that shape. And then you put something like a carrot into the end of it and it's basically like a really big uh, pencil sharpener essentially that's what it is you know so you can use those types of spiralizers but of course then you're limited to the type of vegetables that you can actually use in them so they're great for things like carrots um, and courgette but not so great for things like butternut squash okay oh, Danielle is in the house so now you can see uh, how her name is spelled <laughs> and we will be sharing links as well tomorrow to Danielle's um, website and she's also got um, a YouTube channel as well where she's actually teaching kids how to make tisserie so Danielle actually would you be able to put a link in of that for me that would be great but we will be sharing it tomorrow as well um vicky said hi from cornwall whereabouts in cornwall whereabouts a lovely part of the world the cauliflower leaves were delicious thank you good 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 i'm really really glad that you made that um paul special first time here yes chef tomorrow monday at noon yes exactly 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 thank you for highlighting that for me okay so now with our spiralizer they usually come with a few different blades so here we have this is the one that i'll be using today um so basically this bit will slice it and this bit will shred it same with this one as well the only difference between this one and this one is that this one will do a finer shred so that's okay if um you know your recipe suits that if you want really fine noodles then that's absolutely fine uh, if you want thicker noodles, then use something like this. But we do need to do a bit of work on our veg before we actually get started. We can't just whack this whole thing on and expect the spiralizer to be able to deal with it. So let's prep the veg first. And guys, please do ask your questions as we go. This is a great introduction to raw food as well. Um, really, really, Truro, oh wow, okay. Lovely, that is, is such a stunning place. It's where um, Jeff's mum and dad live. So we are definitely scheduled a visit as soon as, you know, we're allowed out to play again. <laughs> definitely, definitely heading down there. Okay, so with the butternut squash, we want to take the skin off, but we also want to make it a better shape for a spiralizer to use. So I'm actually wondering, you know, with this one, how far does the seeds how far did the seeds go down? So let's open it up and have a look. There we go. So, let's see. Okay, that's okay, that's not too bad. We use this one, we use this one. Erin, you made it finally. Good, 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 good to see you, good to see you, okay. So let's just chop this into quarters and we'll just take this skin off. So, you know, in a lot of raw spaghetti recipes, you'll see things like courgette being used a lot, a lot. Um, and that's mainly because they spiralize really easily, really, really easily. You know, the shape dictates it, you know, you don't have to do any of this. 
palaver to start to start spiralizing there we go so i'm just being really careful with that getting the um the skin off there the the skin on a butternut squash can be a bit too thick for a peeler and that's why i'm using a knife but i was just trying to take off you know just like a small amount but enough because we don't want to be eating the skin raw eating the skin butternut squash is absolutely fine when it's cooked, when it's cooked, it's absolutely fine. Okay, so we're going to go with this shape and see if the spiralizer can deal with this. Um, and um, Sahara said, any good tricks to take skin out? Find it quite hard sometimes, maybe not the right knife. Um, the skin off a butternut squash. So always, always, always find the flat. Always find the flat. That usually goes with pretty much anything that you're doing when you're cutting veggies is the safest way to cut anything is to find the flat um, immediately um, and then you've got that as a really really good base it's really difficult if you know you've got this round thing that's like wobbling around all over the place even this way as well that's not steady that's not steady so you know because this is really really tough if it's not steady if it moves then you're likely to almost cut yourself if not actually cut yourself obviously we want to stay away from that okay so we've got our button squash here prepared and i've also got a cold rabbi here so this is the same deal as with the butternut squash the skin is really 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 quite tough and again you know it's not the right shape for our spiralizer and so you know i'm showing um you guys a different option rather than just using courgette spaghetti because quite often we don't have courgettes at home you know and i purposefully bought quite a few butternut squashes when all of this sort of kicked off because I knew that they would sit in my cupboard and they would be absolutely fine as long as I didn't cut into them. Um, you know, and they last like a really, really, really long time. Sorry, uh, okay, so Colleen said, I keep seeing FB ads for three peelers that apparently take skin off squash pumpkin and one makes spaghetti. Does anyone have it? Oh, oh, that's very interesting. I didn't know about that. Jim, thank you for joining us. And Justine, thank you for joining us. Sarah, I think I'll try to do it on side. We'll try to standing as you did thank you no no problem at all what is that veggie <laughs> so this is a kohlrabi so k-o-h-l-r-a-b-i kohlrabi um it's related to the turnip it's quite it's got quite a lot of like, water but it's quite firm as well and there are quite a few raw recipes that use it um yeah, things like uh, raw ravioli, have you ever seen that? Which is just kind of like an open ravioli, uh, rather than a closed ravioli. And it's used in that as well. But it doesn't really have a strong flavour, so it's going to take on all of the flavours of our sauce very, very, very well. And it has a very pale, very, very pale, light green colour. So when I'm making veg spaghetti, I do like to use these harder veggies because I find that with when you're making a courgette spaghetti, it can just be a bit limp. Um, and so you'll you'll make something and within you know if you don't eat it immediately, if it sits on the side for more than like five five minutes then it can really kind of flop and you can't really get much height on the plate either, which of course, me being chef, is always one of the things that I like to do. Um, so, <laughs> okay, so with our spiralizer, it does have some suction pads on the bottom. They, the suction pads are there for a reason. They are there because we are going to be putting quite a lot of pressure on this way. So what we don't want it doing is just scooting off in that direction. That's not going to be good. <sighs> hey, we'll be trying, I'm sorry, Justine said, hey, we'll be trying this later when I have the ingredients and going to make yummy burgers when I have new scales. They broke the other day. Oh, that's a pain. That's a pain. Well, I tell you what, what you could try to do is um, Google uh, the cup ratio for 
the, the weighted amounts that I gave you. So say, if, I can't even remember how many mushrooms it was, 150 grams of mushrooms. So if you Google what 150 grams of mushrooms is in cups, then you could do it that way um, and find out that information. Because really with the burgers, as long as it's like ballpark, you're absolutely fine. You'll be absolutely fine. So don't worry, you can try it that way. Okay, so this has a little sticky outy thing. That is the technical term, by the way, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> That's what we chefs call it, the sticky outy bit. <laughs> okay. one and we should take it down a notch. I think we can do it with a finer finer blade on it. So let's just get a bit more. Move these out the way. And of course, of course, as you will have seen, there is wastage that happens with this. So so when I was just using the spiralizer there, it didn't like being poked into the end of there. So we're going to put that to one side and I'll use that for something else. I am going to be making a butternut squash mac and cheese later. So, and that is actually testing out a recipe because I'll be making it as a live recipe but not here so it will be on the vegan society's uh instagram page so i will let you guys know when that's happening because i think that that's a recipe that you guys would really really like to have it'd be nice to see you over there as well so it will be on their instagram page page account <laughs> rather than ours okay so let's get the fine one in there we go, and just have this bowl underneath here so we can just catch everything. Ah, I'm glad to see that you love these videos, Kerry. Thank you for commenting. Um, <laughs> Natalia says, "Hi, Chef Day. Your hair is getting so long. I know. I know. Look at that. Look at that. There we go. And someone's got information about." Uh, the grammage, that's great. Star, I made them again yesterday alongside cauliflower dish. We'll post pics later. Great, great, great. Thank you for doing that. I made, Claire says that she's made the burgers twice. Both times a hit with the family. That's awesome, awesome, awesome. Sarah said, I don't have a spiralizer. Would a food processor shredding work? Got a ninja, but haven't used a shop yet? Yes, it would. It really, really would. You just want to be able to make these shapes, basically, you know, so that they are quite thin. That's what we're looking for. That is what we're looking for. Okay, let's go. Way and just make it a bit, a bit slimmer. Oh. So, as you'll see, guys, sometimes you need to just make things a shape that the spiralizer will like more, and that this can grab onto. going on in there which is really nice actually because you'll find that with the thinner ones what will happen is you know they may they may get a bit soggy but I want these like bigger ones just to keep um, some body to it you know um, rather than it just you know all kind of being mush on the plate 
And then we just do our core wrapping. And really you want about two cups or two handfuls of veg per person. If this is going to be, you know, an actual like whole meal. Here we go, another one. Another one, it's like a little kind of umbrella for an elf. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> right, okay, so here we have about two handfuls. Um, so this is going to be for one person or, or two people if it's going to be with something else. One thing that you do have to be aware of, and I'll see if I can find you a really, really good example, is you know sometimes these get incredibly, incredibly long, which means that... Um, Oh, the long one's gone. You know, it, when you're actually eating it, it means that you can be like winding it and winding it and winding it and trying to, yeah, you know, you don't want to end up with a footfall in your mouth and then it's kind of like still attached to the rest of the plate. So if they do get exceptionally long, then just cut it, just cut it with some scissors. And we did talk a little bit yesterday about using scissors and how it's okay. It's absolutely fine to use scissors. It's no problem at all. Okay, so there we go. Well, there we have our veg, and now we're gonna make the sauce. Um, Sue said, dust will be coming off the spiralizer. Finding this advice really, really useful. No problem, no problem at all. But as I said, you know, spiralizers aren't just for courgettes. Um, these kind of veggies work really, really, really well with them. And also I think that, you know, using like an orange veg is beautiful. It's really, really, really beautiful. Much more interesting than just, you know, plain old courgette. Um, and, you know, you can use carrots with it too. Um, and courgettes can be kind of expensive as well. So, okay, so now we're on to our sauce. And this is just a really, really, really flavoursome sauce. Uh, we're not going to be getting much flavour from the veg, really. So we really want the sauce to carry this dish with, in, in terms of flavour. So the flavour is going to come from the sauce. We've got the texture from the veg. That's really the point of the veg. And that it's a carrier for the sauce, as pasta actually is. You know, that's, that's what it's there for. It, it carries the sauce to our mouths and to our tongues, makes us happy. Okay, so this sauce is made with... Now, I said five sun-dried tomatoes, but five large sun-dried tomatoes. So that's actually about 50 grams of sun-dried tomatoes. And I have some in here that are quite soft and some in here that are actually, you know, quite chewy because, you know, they were the proper dried ones and they weren't in oil, but some of them weren't in oil. So we might just have to give this a real blast with our blender. My trusty hand blender, as usual, is here again. Uh, Justine, what if you don't like olives? Well, funny you should say that. <laughs> Jeff doesn't like olives. So we've got an alternative in this recipe, which is you can use capers instead. So I said, I think on the board there, where is it? I think it should say around here, either two tablespoons of olives or capers. So we've got capers today. That's what we're gonna be using. You could also use these beautiful things. I don't know if you guys know about these or use them. I'm desperate to make a martini with these because I think it would look really, really, really beautiful. These are caper bearers. Um, so basically you want anything that has this kind of like tart saltiness. That's what's going to be imparting loads and loads of flavour. So and that, actually, let's keep some out and put some on top of the dish because I think that would be a really, really nice thing to do. They have just such a beautiful shape. I'll find just a couple. There we go. And we can pop those on the top of our dish when we're done. Uh, but yes, I'm using capers rather than olives today. Do you like capers, actually? Justine, do you like capers? Let me know. Is that a good alternative for you? So we've got our 50 grams of sun-dried tomatoes in there, plus our two tablespoons of capers. The capers that I use were in salt. So you can either get them in brine or in salt. The ones that I used today were in salt. So I just, uh, sorry, I just washed those, put them into a little sieve, rinse them underneath the tap, that was it, just to get all of that salt off. And then in here, we have half a tablespoon of white miso. White miso is gonna balance out all of that saltiness. 
because white miso is quite sweet. And one of the other reasons that I want to add white miso is because it's so good for your tummy. Really, 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 really good for your tummy. Abigail! Welcome, 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 bunny girl. Uh, Johnny, thank you for joining us. Gloria, thank you for joining us again. Justine said that she's never tried capers. Uh, but her housemate doesn't like them though. But you might, you might, you might, you might. So, you know, have a try because as I said, Jeff doesn't like olives, but he does like capers, which he'd never, I don't think he'd really like had lots of them until he met me. <laughs> and I absolutely love capers. So yes, we do have those in quite a few dishes. Really, really um, simple, but flavoursome addition to any kind of pasta dish is capers, fried capers. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, so we're going to whisk this up, mix, sorry, blitz it. Um, with the hand blender, really try and get it as smooth as possible. But I've got some water on hand here because I know that my blender is going to struggle a bit with this. As I said, some of those sun dried tomatoes are a little bit rubbery, some of them are soft and fine, but some of them were a little bit rubbery, a little bit hard. So, oh, Gloria said that she's sorry, she's like, don't worry, don't worry, we're always here, and you know, you can join in whenever you want to. And always remember, if you want to see the recipe, the full recipe. Um, you know, if it's something you go, oh, actually, I'd quite like to make that, then you can you can watch it again another time. Um, Anne said, can you use dark miso? So, dark miso, salty, through to white miso, which is sweet. And in between, we have things like red miso, which are both salty and sweet. Um, but with this recipe, we are trying to balance out the saltiness of the sun-dried tomato and also the capers. So we do need something that is sweet in there to balance it out. I mean, you could try maybe something like lemon juice, actually. That might be okay, that might work well. Um, so I'd recommend something like that rather than a dark miso. Uh, Mark, thank you for joining us. Uh, and Erin, fried capers, that's interesting. It's lovely, really, really lovely. Fried capers, Google it after, after the show, after the show, <laughs> Google it. Uh, and you'll see, and they, they kind of like open up. Um, and they, they're like little crispy flowers. Really, really, really lovely. So we'll have to put that into a recipe another time. Um, in fact, just a few fried capers on top of this would be beautiful, really, really beautiful. Okay, so now we're gonna start blending this and I'm gonna add bits of water if my blender is telling me that it needs it. Yeah, and I can see that the mixture is really quite thick and dense and it's not really going to be going round anytime soon so I'll pop a bit of water in it. But when I'm adding the water to it I'm being really really careful with how much I add because the more water I add to it the more I'm going to lose that really intense flavour. And I don't want to do that too much, so I'm just adding little splashes of water so that um, I'm just going to give the blender just enough to work with. There we processor you would be able to make this with a food processor but you have to probably um, make a much bigger batch because most food processors would struggle with this small small amount and that's one of the reasons why I like using a hand blender rather than a food processor is because you can deal with these really small amounts <laughs> you got me left in there, so I'll just add a tiny bit of water again. is more happy and by 
by that, what I mean is that more of the liquids, more of the sauce in there is moving around, which means that the blender is able to do its job more. So that's a thing to listen out for. Um, I think I might have mentioned to you guys before that, you know, a few years ago when I was really into you know sharing recipes and developing recipes and and working as a recipe developer as well i you know i did consider getting something like a vitamix blender and vitamix blenders are brilliant absolutely brilliant um expensive you know really expensive 500 quid which you know is not you know it's not a cheap bit of kit at all um it is expensive and i decided at that time that if i did get a vitamix that I would just end up using it all the time and then I would end up sharing recipes and saying use a Vitamix which a lot of people just don't have so I decided that I would just stick with my hand blender which 24 quid from Argos and I would learn how to work with it and I would learn how to create food in a way where I didn't need to buy such an expensive bit of kit. Let's just see if we've got any more questions. Um, Anne said, can you soak the tomatoes beforehand to soften them? So the tomatoes that I actually had that were quite rubbery, those ones that I mentioned, they've been soaking in oil for a long time and they were still really quite um, chewy. Um, but they blended down really, really, really well. I think I've still got like a few little bits in there, but not much at all, not much at all. Uh, Mick, thank you for joining us. Christine, hi Chef Day, thank you for all your inspiration. I'm trying out my spiralizer, but all I'm getting are butternut squash C shapes. No long noodles. Um, any idea what is going wrong? Okay, so I would question like which blade it is that you're using because I do, I have these three blades. I haven't got the other one out, but basically I have a third one that doesn't have this part on it. It just has this. So that might be the reason. Um, you can contact me um, either through the Vegan Chef School um, or just on, on Facebook and find me. Um, and you can actually send me a photo. Send me a photo of your blades. That would probably be a good place to start. So let's start with that. Um, I'm going to show you guys this sauce up close. So I know we like a good close up. On this show there we go so it's still fairly chunky i didn't add too much water as i said i just wanted to add small amounts of water just enough for the blender to work with but not so much that i would be taking away that flavor oh wow oh ha, ha. see you know i said it was it's piquant when you taste it you will know why i call it that it is very very piquant <clears throat> lovely 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 and that thing has to be very strong flavored because these you know the noodles don't have much of a flavor at all so now i would when i was when i was making that i would usually add something like thyme or sage or rosemary but i decided that today we would use some basil instead because we've got this fresh basil on the windowsill so we will add that in a moment now first of all we are going to add some lovely spinach to this recipe so this is just some baby spinach here and i just wanted to show you a really really quick method of making this wilt a bit because you know when we have a lot of spinach just like this on our plate it can be a bit hard to eat because you know you chomp down on it and you're chomping and you're chomping and you're chomping and you're you know you're chomping even more <laughs> um and we can't necessarily take in as much as our bodies would probably enjoy us to take in when we've just got these like dry leaves you know as a salad or something like that so a really really good method of making them wilt is just to use our hand so this is hand wilting and i'm literally just massaging these leaves and eventually they will become like they've been sauteed so we're keeping all of the nutrition in there you know because often you know if you saute or steam spinach you'll end up with green water right and you don't end up consuming the green water and that's where a lot of the goodness has gone to okay let's see if we've got any more questions abigail whoa i think i have that exact device was like good 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 oh antonia has yes, says yes i have this model as well good 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 then you can completely relate 
and you can see that it does the job it does the job well so this is a really really great way of just making this spinach wilt more so it'll be so much easier for you guys to eat um, this is lovely with a bit of white miso and um, nutritional yeast mixed into it amazing 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 so you guys should definitely definitely try that out we're just going to mix in all our lovely veg in here There we go, and we have our sauce in here, and I am going to get my hands involved, and I know from teaching that there might be a few of you who tend not to get your hands involved, and when you want to make something, you're like that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let's get our hands involved so that we make sure that all of that yummy sauce is coating our veggies. We don't want any veggies in there that are not adequately or amply covered in sauce. We really, really want to make sure that, that, that it's all in with our spaghetti. There we go. <laughs> Mick said, if you think spinach can be chewy, you should try nettles. Oh boy, what do you do with nettles? Please, 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 please tell me. Erin said, I love using hands to mix. I, I actually think that it's a really lovely way to properly connect with food. I know, I know, I know, that's the hippie in me. I know. Okay, so let's just add a little bit of basil. I'm just going to my hands. There we go. Um, so as I said, if I was going to be using something like one of the woody herbs, like thyme or rosemary or sage, you know, that type of thing, which would go really, really well with this dish, then I would have put those herbs into the, the mixture that I was blending, into the sauce, before I blended it. And I would just blend it all down, you know, and do it that way. Um, and that's great for a more kind of like autumnal dish. But now it's summer. I don't think anyone told the clouds out there. <laughs> it's, okay, it's spring. It's spring. But you know, I live in Eng England, so we're always like, is it summer yet? Is it summer yet? We're always desperate, desperate for some sunshine. Um, Paul, uh, Paul said, Mick, no Sunday vegan outreach day. Ah, right, okay. There we go. So just pop that in there. I didn't want to blend it down because I do like these um, bits of basil. You know, so you'll be eating it and just every now and again, you'll get this like really intense flavor of basil. So let's just get some of this onto the plate and then we'll do our topping. And one of the lovely things about these noodles, because they are more firm than your courgette noodle, we have some really lovely shapes that you can see. And the, the orange just makes it pop more. And orange is meant to make you hungry as well. It's meant to be the colour that makes us hungry. Okay, so in here I have some toasted pine nuts. You can use pretty much any nut that you want with this. It just so happens that, I, I mean, I know that pine nuts are really expensive. I have them left over from the school, so that's why I'm using these. So we're just going to crush these up in a pestle and mortar. As I said, I have toasted them. These ones are pine nuts, but something like Brazil nut would be lovely. Walnut would be lovely as well. Even something like hazelnut. Even something like hazelnut, but I guess if I was going to use hazelnut on top, then 
really I would also be using more the woody herbs so hazelnut goes really well with those autumnal herbs you want to think you know like hazelnut is more of an autumnal flavor and therefore it goes with things like rosemary and thyme and sage more um, and in here we have half a teaspoon sorry half a tablespoon of nutritional yeast give that a quick mix there we go so we've got one tablespoon so it's half a tablespoon actually i didn't put all the nuts in there um and half a tablespoon of nooch in there um sorry let me just see if i missed any questions abigail said my parents visited england recently and bought me back a cute purse that's very nice of them that's very nice of them um mick said that he makes nettle soup curry uh, can be mixed with spinach got to remove all the stems and petiole did i say that right pureed makes it easier i would love to try that uh and said did you put the miso in i must have missed that yes so the miso went in with the sauce all of that went in together oh thank you erin for replying that's absolutely brilliant okay so this can just be sprinkled on top and this is basically our parmesan replacement um nutritional yeast and toasted nuts are wonderful as a replacement for parmesan and as i said to you guys before one of the things that our chefs do, one of our secrets, is sprinkling bits onto a dish. And that can make it just look so much prettier. So let's pop our lovely little caper berries on there. And I will bring it around in a moment. Now, this is a really, really flexible dish. What did we call it the other day? Was it a hurdy-gurdy recipe? <laughs> When uh, Katie was on, one of our viewers said, you know, it's a recipe where you can really kind of mix and match and use up leftover veg and stuff like that. So, you know, with the noodles, as I said, of course you can use courgette noodles. Of course you can use things like a carrot. Uh, we use butternut squash. You could use pumpkin, um, celeriac, swede. Swede gets a really bad rap. I think most people only know to feed that to a hamster, but we can use it too. Um, turnip as well absolutely love turnip all of these great veggies that aren't necessarily that expensive i know sometimes courgettes can be quite expensive so we don't have to use them we can use these um more economical veggies as well um as i said we do need to cut them down so that the spiralizer likes the shape of them and we do end up with you know these bits and pieces and these that um we're not going to throw them in are we gang no <laughs> we don't do that on this show um we will be using them for something else later on today i'm sure they're great for you know making a stock or a stew or whatever it is you know so i think that this does need a bit of basil on it there we go just in the side there I'll bring it round so that you guys can get a better a better view of it in a second um so this is my dish for today abigail says that she loves turnips good 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 i love turnips roasted turnips are the way forward absolutely love them okay guys so this is our beautiful dish there we go And just see how beautiful those colours are. Really, really pretty. And how the parmesan replacement that we've used, our pine nuts and nutritional yeast or nooch, has broken up, you know, the, the design and just made it a bit prettier. And we've got our caper berries on top here, which are, of course, optional. There we go. Okay, so... That's my recipe for today, guys. I really hope that you like it. Um, please do let us know what else you would like us to show you. Always open to suggestions. As I said, today's recipe was because somebody asked me what they can do with a spiralizer um, because they just had it sitting in their cupboard and wanted to be inspired. So I hope for you guys at home that have spiralizers that you're going to make this dish with, uh, with your spiralizer, let me know how you get on. Please do share, continue sharing your pictures of your recipes in our community hub which is our facebook group 
Um, okay, Abigail said that you sometimes eat the turnips raw. That's because you're a bunny rabbit. <laughs> uh, Paul said it looks great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you guys for sharing your time with us. It is absolutely, it's been so lovely building this community. Um, we started this when the lockdown happened. Um, school got closed so we couldn't teach um, but we really wanted to still continue sharing our knowledge and you guys have been brilliant you're absolutely lovely and it's so so nice to get to know you um, and <clears throat> I'm not gonna get teary I don't do that <clears throat> <laughs> so, but we will be here every single day sharing a midday recipe with you. As I said, tomorrow is very, very, very special live with Danielle Mopatui, who is a very talented patisserie chef. So she will be teaching you a simple but effective vegan patisserie recipe. Great to get you started, great to kind of dip your toe in the water first because you know patisserie can seem a little bit difficult and a little bit you know like it's going to be quite complicated but Danielle will take you through it step by step. Um, so hope to see you guys tomorrow. I'll be admin so I will be there um, and you guys have a lovely day. <laughs>